Today is Sunday, July 21st, 2014. We are in the room of Reverend Dr. Burgis Pati Bulangada. Thank you, Burgis Sacha, for agreeing to talk to us. You have published so many books, written hundreds of articles. You have dedicated your life to promote awareness about the Zero Malabar liturgy. And uh, in spite of your ill health, what was the source of this energy that made you do so much work? Where do you get inspiration? The inspiration is primarily the task entrusted with me by my religious superiors. The religious superiors asked me to learn in depth the liturgical subject and teach in our seminary, Karma Dhamma. Mm. That was the task entrusted to me when I was ordained. Mm -hmm. After my ordination, mm. the prior general called me and asked me, you, uh, you are uh, selected to study for the, uh, for the Karmaram College and you are asked to study the liturgy in depth and teach our students, our seminarians there. Where did you do your higher studies? Um, and I was sent to Rome for the higher studies and fortunately Father Lucas Pithvatikil was there with the course of Father Chavra and uh, uh, Father General asked him to select the center where I am to study the, uh, the liturgy subject and he selected St. Anselm, the Liturgical Institute of St. Anselm for the higher studies and uh, I began my studies there. Uh -huh. What kind of involvement you had with the Syriac language during your priestly formation, seminary formation? Yeah, in, uh, during our seminary formation, naturally we had to learn, is it not? So, uh -huh. in the first two uh, years of language courses, uh, it was a must, the Syriac language, because uh, all our prayers, liturgy and everything at that time was in Syriac. Mm. So we were obliged to, mm. otherwise there is no possibility of becoming a priest. Mm. Is it not so? Mm. Uh, in the first two years mm. we were taught, uh, regularly taught the, the, the Syriac language mm. and uh, it was a, it's a, uh, practically a, a, a good subject for me that uh, I, I liked it, mm. the Syriac language, mm. and uh, during the novitiate and so on, all our prayers were in Syriac, and so naturally we had to uh, 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 learn a little more through uh, practice right, also. Right, right. Now, when you celebrated the Liturgy of the Hours as a seminarian, did you really understand the meaning of the text? Mostly we understood, mm. not all, mm. because uh, there were a lot of prayers, is it not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, during the, uh, in those days when it was in Syriac, mm. um, we had elaborate prayers, mm. and so because there were so many, it's, it's a long collection mm. of prayers. So mm. every minute detail was not, but usually in in novitiate and in the second year novitiate, mm. we were taught the mm. meaning mm. of the liturgical prayers. Mm. So that was mm. also part of the curriculum. Mm. The when was your ordination? Ordination was in 70. Where was your first Mass? Uh, that was in, our, in my parish, Karakamaram. So that was in Malayalam? That was in Malayalam. Ah, okay. Ordination was in Kalamajiri. Ah, ah, okay. uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, when you went to Rome to study, you came across a priest from the Chaldean Rite who were using Syriac. Did you find a difference between the way you pronounced Syriac words and they pronounced? Did they comment on your pronunciation? Yeah, but practically when we were in Rome, we had not much use of the Syriac. At that time, everything was in Malayalam. Right. So practically we were using Malayalam, and they were using their language, and, and we were not much concerned with and each other, with the, with the language. So. But definitely we marked the difference that they had in the pronunciation right. because much of the Arabic influence uh, there. Uh, one of my friends in the in the in the in the Damascheno College in Rome uh, is the present patriarch there. 
the Guardian Patriot. Where? In, uh, in, the, in Mosul? In, or in, in Iraq. In, um, in Iraq. In the, uh -huh. the Baghdad. His, his headquarters is in Baghdad. Is Do you have communication with him? Oh, no. At present not. No. At uh -huh. present not. Uh -huh. But one of my uh, good friends in the, in the States, I told you once, in, the, in Chicago Diocese, the uh -huh. Guardian Diocese. Is there, uh, J Jammo or? J not Jammo. Jammo is the bishop of the, the California diocese. Uh -huh. yeah, in Detroit there is a Chaldean diocese uh -huh. and there was a, a, a Chaldean priest who is a very good friend of mine and bought all my books the, which are in English and uh -huh. distributed there among the seminarians and uh -huh. they, were they are all studying these subjects. There. And he has become the new bishop there. In uh, Chicago? Uh, no, no, in the, uh, in the Detroit. Oh, the, really? the Galilean dies of Detroit. Okay. In this June 14, he okay. was his ordinary. I would like to meet with him. <laughs> Frank Kalabat, that uh -huh. is his uh -huh. name. Uh -huh. So uh -huh. he's the new bishop. Uh -huh. Former bishop was also a friend of mine in Damasheno. Right. Uh -huh. Ibrahim. Uh -huh. He was the uh -huh. former bishop. Uh -huh. And now he retired. Uh -huh. And now this one is the uh -huh. bishop. The Galilean church. Do they really respect our traditions, our, the way we do things, or they... Of course, those who know things, they respect it. Uh -huh. Others, I don't know, because uh -huh. I had contact only with the, those who were coming to study in, mm. in, uh, in Rome. Uh -huh. And afterwards, uh, recently, my contact was all with this this particular priest in right. uh, in in Detroit. So they respect you enough. Respect you meaning you are a representative for our church, and your scholarship and your books enough to you buy them and use them as their resource. Uh, yeah, all the uh, then uh, practically I had published the four volumes uh, of the uh, liturgical exposition of the of our church. Uh -huh. The in four volumes, the uh -huh. liturgical studies, which uh -huh. I was taking classes here, right, right. summarized and in four volumes I have published. Right. All the four volumes, many copies they have uh, bought and distributed among the seminarians and priests uh -huh. there. Uh -huh. And they are all learning and they are teaching others also. And now the, the, the lay people of their community are ordering books from me. That is a great honor. <laughs> And also the Rasa text recently which I published. Uh -huh. The Guardians, they never use Rasa. They have no Rasa. Only uh -huh. Rasa is a special thing of ours. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And, uh, but the English text which I published, uh -huh. the, <laughs> the, uh, the only that this priest, that now the bishop, uh -huh. he had bought 20 gopis. Wow. <laughs> and distributed there. So the history is turning around. <laughs> 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 there was a time when we were using their resources now they are using our resources that is uh, that is really great uh, all the many things which i have also in english translated because from, from father emmanuel mm. i had the, the, the our three days fast mm. the mm. translation mm. that also he mm. uh, uh, took from me i send him in the, in okay. the pdf form ah, ah, and ah. they are praying that ah, ah. the english translation ah. which father emmanuel made right right You mentioned that Rasa, the most solemn celebrate form of the celebration of our Kurbana, is unique to the Sira Malabar Church. How did that happen? When did that happen? Who composed the prayers? Who exactly. composed the music? Exactly, we do not know mm. the, exactly the, the, mm. the time or when it has begun. But when we know, and also now, with all the documents, the ancient documents and everything document, ah. all the scholars are of opinion ah. that it is a purely Malabar origin reality. Right. This is the, it's the most solemn celebration, isn't right. it? So right. the right. Eucharist is the, the, the solemn celebration yeah. Yeah. and the people in Malabar, they thought of celebrating it more solemnly. Yeah. And what is being done mm. is that uh, they have elaborated the liturgy of the world. Right. So right. that is practically yes. Yes. what is done and also a special uh, invocation of the Holy Spirit. Right. That also right. is a special addition right. there right. at Esca. From the textual and musical perspective, yesterday I attended the Malayalam version of the Rasa and some of the chants are so rich in symbolism, in imagery, uh, highly poetical. So 
there, if these chants were composed in Kerala, that means we had people who were so capable of using the Syriac language, uh, writing independent poetry. So it is a pity that we don't know who did that. Is it possible that this was done by the CMIs in the 19th century? Oh, no, 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 no. Much before. Much before. Much before. Could it be possible? You no, know, there, there is a, a, a even a, I believe there is a documentary evidence that uh, one of the prominent leaders in the in the university, the so-called University of Edessa and his views, hmm. from Malabar, and he has done the translation, the Syriac translation of Aristotle from Greek to Syriac in the University of Edessa and his views. Which century? That is in the sixth century. So there is, there was frequent contact and there was uh, uh, communications between the people of Malabar and the uh, 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 Middle East. Yes, yes, and they yes. had uh, interchange of the people uh -huh. and uh, they were, and the, the only university or the study center yeah, in the yeah. East was uh -huh. the Edessa and Isbe School founded right, by right, Sinta Prime, right. is it not? Is it, uh, could it be possible that Ale the time of Alexander the Indian? Uh, to my uh, learning and studies, it must be in, in between some uh, eighth and 10th or 11th century. You mean the solemn form of the Rasa? Rasa those formation, were formation. Between 8th and 10th century? 11th or 11th, 11th century. 11th. Give us a kind of idea of why you arrived at that hypothesis. Because of the nature of the prayers, and I am judging it only from the internal evidences, not ah. the external. I ah. could not go ah. to the details of the external ah. evidences and say, of course, it is a matter of study. Ah. We have to make a serious research on that point. As that is my feeling. Yes, yes. Of course, this is a ah. uh, because it is our the unique celebration of the Malabarians. Right. So we have we have to do the research. How yes, is yes, its origin? Yes. How has it developed? Actually? So that has yet to be done. Yeah. From the perspective of uh, dogmas, those chants are... Um, is that a vantage point to look at the contents of the chants to see the dogmas in the church that evolved later uh, were already... Oh, maybe I'm not asking it in the right way. Um, no, these are the... the the dogmas, practically most majority of the dogmas and the basic teachings all developed in the patristic era, is it not? Mm, mm, so mm. by the 8th century, mm. patristic era, era mm. comes to an end. Mm, mm, so mm. The, 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 the dogmatic point, uh, issues and the things connected in the, uh, in the prayers and some things are are all pertain to that mm, era, mm, that's mm, all. Mm, mm, then the, 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 the uh, liturgical style and the other perspective, according to that mm. perspective, I say that it must be before the 11th century. Ah, that okay, is okay. Now, we, there was an epiclesis in the, during the liturgy of the word, invocation uh, of the Holy uh, Spirit. Uh, towards the end of the, that, there is the prostration, right? Prostration, right? The right. special prostration. Yeah. Right, so, what was the logic uh, of having a section of logic means that is the simple logic for every liturgy yeah. that is that the liturgical space mm. is eternal space mm. so there is no time mm. so that mm. is the simple logic mm. for the liturgy that is even in latin tradition it is exactly like that mm. there, there is no uh, success, uh, successive uh, future, mm. uh, uh, present and uh, past, present, future, counting yeah, in there. But my question is, based on the idea of liturgical space, the Bayama and the sanctuary, um, the invocation, the the rituals that we saw in the that we see in the Rasa, uh, doesn't fit with the Bayama sanctuary concept because the priests are doing the invocation of the Holy Spirit. In, on the, in, the Bema. in the Bema area. So in this ordinary Mass, we don't have that. So it was like an inv a kind of um, bringing something that we usually do within the sanctuary is now being done on the Bema. So more ritualistic, more formal. Otherwise, the liturgy of the world is 
quite informal. We read, we sing, we give a Turgama, we give a uh, Shuraya. Then that is a place where we have a lot of freedom. But here in the Rasa, it becomes uh, serious, more ritualistic, uh, of invoking the Holy Spirit. So I mean, it is beautiful. I'm saying, isn't there a permeability of uh, the sanctuary? Uh, that distinction between the Bema and the sanctuary is now like. Uh, yeah, you, you know that it's also a farewell celebration of the priest or the celebrant from the Bema to go to the altar. Ah, okay. Is it not? It is a farewell to the Bema. You mean that... Uh, this prostration. Ah, okay, okay. It's a farewell. So ah. it is in the, prayer, in the farewell ceremony ah. that he is invoking. So that invocation comes effective in the sanctuary. Okay. I see. So it is a, we can have foretaste of, uh, of what is going to happen uh, in the sanctuary. Uh, okay. Now, only yesterday I took it seriously. I watched and I was really impressed by, especially by the chants, uh, the elaborate uh, compositions. And it is amazing that these chants were composed in Kerala. So these people knew the language so well. I mean, Alexander the Indian is a fine example of uh, ah, Syriac, the mastery. Syriac, our people were well versed. Not everybody, mm. but mm. there were well versed people in. Mm. Mm. I have a serious question to ask you from my studies of uh, the, the church history. And is there any documentation in West Asia? about us. Did they take anything from us and say, oh, we went to India. Those Christians have wonderful music, wonderful this, so we want to use it here. Is there any instance of uh, borrowing from here to there? Um, perhaps uh, during those days, uh, this kind of uh, taking or borrowing or uh, uh, this kind of concept itself was not there, I feel. Ah. Because this is one church, so it is part of one church. Yes. So it, it is being considered like that, that's all. Okay, but if they came, if a bishop came to confirm our children to ordain, and if they saw the celebrant of a rasa, they cannot but be impressed. And uh, wouldn't they say, what is happening in the Malabar region? They are having a rasa. Uh, they are beautiful songs, beautiful chants. We need to do this. We need to borrow this. I, I think I definitely the bishops might have celebrated it. Yeah. Oh, he's the main <laughs> celebrant anyway. Yes. When <laughs> they might have celebrated it. So how it. come they did not take this from us as a treasure? And but, bring, but but like the Kohinoor uh, <laughs> <laughs> diamond. <laughs> Only that there is no evidence that they have cel they have celebrated it. There. there, there. But they didn't even borrow a chant from us because those chants we sing in the rasa are marvelous. Are, are not are not be not, not taken as far as I also know mm. not mm. taken. They haven't. We keep records of the bishops who come here, um, but what kind of records did they keep? When they say, for example, when Abraham Malpan came to India, do they did they keep any records? I heard that we we had we had no chance to go and check up some documents in the Baghdad archives and so on. Is it not? There is in the archives in the sixth century uh, a document appointing the bishop for Malaba. In the sixth century. Sixth century. Okay. And I heard about that. And then onwards. The normal, or before that also, there was, there must be, because you know, uh, the married priesthood was the normal custom for us all, is it not? And the, the bishops were not uh, were not married. Mm, mm, so because of that, mm. when it came to the appointment of a bishop, they have naturally to look to the unmarried priest. Okay. Unmarried priests in those days were only in the monasteries. Ah. So they have to look to the monasteries, oh. and the monasteries were mostly there. Mm. 
Of course, we have some evidence. There are some monasteries here, yeah. but the monasteries were mostly there. Okay, that's why we, they didn't think of ordaining anybody as a bishop here. Yeah, there is no possibility. <laughs> Unmarried priest there must be, is it not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, coming back to the borrowing, this has been bothering me. In fact, I made it a point in my article, in my chat room, in the Oxford University Press, uh, the, Oxford, the Oxford Handbook of Music and World Christianities. We have been borrowing, but there is no evidence. It's also, uh, Father Joseph, I, I don't think of borrowing it. Ah. It is all we using it. Yeah, that thing, is fine. Our but thing, that is all. That is all. But whether I change the <laughs> word borrowing. But we cherish center frames across the head. Yeah. And when they come here, center they frame is a common common reason. But we created something here, and all. Yeah. And in their that, uh, that I also am, am amazed. Yeah. Why they, they didn't take a part at least of that? Yes. That also that is sure. Yeah. But this comes from the history of the perspective comes from the history of Hindustani music. Hindustani music is a combination of South Indian classical music or Indian music, classical music at the time with the Persian music. So during the Mughal Empire, the, the musicians came here. They found this interesting. They adopted and experimented with it and a new, entirely different music culture evolved. The Persian musicians who came here, they were fascinated by the Indian classical tradition. They wrote about it in Persian uh, and they made, uh, they wrote travelogues, they wrote down what they saw here and those have become the great documentation for what was happening in India. While we did not keep documents, they made documents of our culture. Did something similar happen when the bishops came here? Did they write a travelogue or did they... <laughs> we do not know yeah. about anything of that sort. Is yeah. it? But there are some letters and such things which they have written uh -huh. and survived, is it not? That mm -hmm. one, Father Shuvama has uh -huh. published some three letters of Mar Jacob. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, which century? That is in the 16th, uh, 15th century, ah, so, ah, ah. so that uh, the Mar Jacob, the one of the, uh, or not the, uh, before Abraham, ah. who came here, and ah, so, okay. so, ah. somehow the, the Portuguese people persecuted him, and uh, he has written three letters to the patriarch. And those letters are very, very beautiful letters, ah. what the, the nature of Christianity and the things are all there. For example, in music, they have something, a rhythm called Al-Hindi, meaning they came here, they found this rhythm, and they gave the name Al-Hindi. So I was wishing they had something similar, uh, some kind of, do not documentation writing, but an oral tradition about us. You have spent your life for the promotion of the Aramaic language and liturgy. What do you think is the future of this language? Liturgy will survive, uh, but what about the language, the Aramaic language? Language also will survive, that is my feeling. Now more and more people uh, find interest in studying the language. Even lay people take much interest uh, in learning this language. Mm. So I am very hopeful. Perhaps more than as priests and religious, mm -hmm. that the lay people are giving more interest, and also the uh, the the faculty in uh, in MG University, mm -hmm. there are also more lay people mm -hmm. studying the Syriac language. Mm -hmm. So because of that, uh, I feel, and also we will also slowly uh, uh, take up the the this this uh, momentum. I feel. Mm -hmm that we priests also will try to learn more and more the language and do more researches to the roots and other things of that. I, I am only hopeful. That is wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> so this is your doctoral dissertation uh, done in Rome. Resurrection life, resurrection life and renewal. Kamta, now they have changed it in the in the series. Uh, Kamta Brihta, they say now. 
meaning that blessed blessed resurrection now why did you choose this topic because uh, when i analyzed i had the 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 topic uh, a different topic at the beginning of my dissertation hmm. when i studied the whole thing i found that the whole thing is comprised in this short sentence the whole content of the resurrection celebration can be summarized to these three words hmm. so because of that i chose this as the title ah. and my uh, director was perfectly happy who was your director he was uh, a, a, a layman was my oh, okay as is ah. an italian ah. Ah. Yeah. Ah. and what is the content of uh, the content is the easter celebration okay easter celebration of the city the the, 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 uh, the the sunday celebration and the previous day Easter vigil, ah, uh, yeah, vigil and Sunday celebration. Sunday celebration. So Saturday and Sunday, practically. Okay. So a complete study of those of liturgy of those liturgy, two days. Liturgical celebrations. Oh, okay, great. So because of that, uh, they can use that. Uh, Abel's version is mostly a translation of the Latin. Right, right. right. That also the old Latin, right? Not the present one. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. The present one is far better. Yeah, 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 yeah. The, in the Latin tradition, a thorough renewal has happened yes. in the Holy Week service. Yes, yes. yes. So, so we had an independent, uh, independent Holy Week service. Independent uh, and elaborate celebration. Uh, yeah. Dates back to which century? It goes the the, the manuscripts goes to the um, fifth to sixth centuries. Okay. The the printed text we have only from the eighteenth uh, centuries. You know. Ah, okay. The Bedjan right, right, has right, done the first right, printing. Right, right, right. and the, the conclusion the two conclusions of this thesis that i i i would like to mention that yes, also please. two conclusion of the thesis one a liturgical catechesis the necessity of a liturgical catechesis in our church mm -hmm. that is one of the mm -hmm. uh, conclusion meaning catechesis should happen within With, within the liturgy, the liturgy and the, through the liturgy mm. the liturgical catechesis mm. and it, in that perspective I have published that Marthoma Margam. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. That is in that perspective. That is the 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 realization of my, that conclusion. Right. And another conclusion is a community, a monastic community, that celebrates the liturgy in its perfect form. Ah. That is the sisters, the Marthoma Sahodri. In uh, Kurumbanada. In Kurumbanada. Yes, we went there. Ah. Yeah, that is the reality that happened. Ah. These are the two conclusions of the thesis. So you envisioned it as a young man in Rome. Yeah, in these thesis, in these yes. in these thesis, and actually, uh, when I returned, uh, I spoke this matter with Archbishop Pauther. Then he was Bishop of Kanjirapulli, mm -hmm. and he was perfectly in agreement with both of these ideas. And he encouraged me that we try to, and the the. the the publishing of the book that I did myself, but right. with the other thing, he very positively mm. uh, helped me, mm. and because of his and then Father Kodapara and Agurya uh, Gosalias Padakit, mm. that we established the right. monastic right. community. Right. Very nice. That is great. Did we have Holy Week services? Definitely. Before Beautiful. the Portuguese came. Beautiful <laughs> liturgical celebration. Ah. The whole thing I have published in English. This is different from the uh, Latin. The, the, the Malayalam also is there. The Latin, right? No, 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 no. Completely different. Where did this 
originate. Originate it, it, it is in the Sirik. In the Sirik, the fathers, the Sirik fathers composed it. Okay. And okay. Uh, Bajan abridged it and Bajan has published it. Last year, we had an experience of um, Holy Thursday service in uh, Konduruti in Arunachalam. And they were doing the service that we saw, this chant, the holy holy chant that we saw was exactly as it happened in the Latin rite. <laughs> yeah. Now the, the present uh, uh, text that we have published from Mount St. Thomas uh, is a combination, is ah. a, a compromised text. Okay. Hab, both the, the, which I have published ah. and also which Father Abel has published. Okay. Both the texts were taken and uh, in many places as option it is given. Oh, okay. It is like that it is published. Oh. Shall we conclude by your reciting a prayer, your favorite prayer in Syriac? Is there a prayer that you like to say in Syriac <laughs> to get your voice in that language? My favorite prayer is the Our Father. Okay, please. <laughs> 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 Avindus Maya, Neskandesma, Tese Malkosa, Kandis, Kandis, Kandisate, Avindus Maya, Tamilens Maya, Pararambosu, Hagere, Nasha, Kayenla, Kandis, Kandis, Kandisate, Avindus Maya, Neskandesma, Tese Malkosa, Neheve Seviana, Aikinadus Maya, Bara, Aulen Lahama, Sunakan, Newman, Vasokan, Havi, Nota, and Aikinada Punan. Shokan Lehayavi, Ula Talan Nesiona, Elapusam in Bisha, Method Zilahi Malkusa, Uhai loves his boat al Alam Melminami, Suha Lava Dora Vada Ruha the Kudisha, Minada Mada Malalama, Min Mami, Avud Dismaya, Neskandisma, Tese Malkusa, Kandis, Kandis, Kandisat, Avud Dismaya, Tamilin Smaya, Para Rambu Suha, Iru Nasha Kayenla. Kandis, Kandis, Kandis. Does the Anglican Rite have this Our Father? They have the, the, the Holy Hymn, definitely the Anglican tradition the also. The Trisagium. Yeah, uh, Trisagium. Yeah. Uh, but but this, this Kanona added to the Our Father, as far as I know, they don't have it's it. It's unique to yeah, us. Unique to us. That is great. And that we, uh, and we um, uh, celebrate this this form of the uh, our father at the beginning at the at the end of every liturgy not only the eucharistic celebrations the canonical hours the, the divine praises oh. and also the sacramentals even the sacramentals oh okay i see so th that was our favorite but th that shows that our favorite prayer, prayer always was our father oh, oh. in every liturgical celebration Oh, I say not only in the solemn celebration of Kurbana. Not only that, every celebration. Oh, okay. In in our uh, when we were celebrating the divine praises, the, the canonical hours in mm. uh, Syriac, mm. the father also remembers that mm. we were celebra we were uh, reciting it in the beginning and at the end. Oh, okay. That's interesting. I didn't know that. Now, can you sing something in Syriac? <laughs> I don't know whether it is right or not, Kandisha Allah. Sing. Kandisha Allah, Kandisha Hail Zahana, Kandisha Lama Yosa Yesaraham Malai. Kanchu gala valo ra vala ruha de kudisha Kandisha alaha Kandisha ailzana Kandisha lama yosa yesaragamala <laughs>